on Facebook, everybody. Okay. You both on there? Yes. You looking good? Legal counsel is set. Here we don't we have as much as we need of Michael. Move this out of the way. Yeah, if you only have half of Michael's face, shot. that's good. Rachel, you haven't been on a show in two years. Do not I didn't pipe want up. to be on. Nobody's asking. <laughs> Nobody's asking that question. You know what? I'm just going to do it with him then. Go lay down right, in the street. Let's, let's rock and roll, okay. kids. <clears throat> All right. Jimmy brings it. <clears throat> okay. Welcome to Get Justice with Scott Elliott Smith. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. I love that intro. Any good? Uh, I, it's my favorite part of the show is just the intro <laughs> coming in, and then when we're going out now. Taking us out. Everything in the middle, we'll just make up. Today, Michael, attorney fees. Let's talk about those. Yes, I know this is something that you and I talk about a lot because on the show we've kind of discussed that there are there are the what I call the churn and burn, trying to get you in to settle your cases. So it's about making money. I don't think we've really elaborated on how different firms operate and how they get compensated yeah let's let's set the groundwork first okay. um, a lot of people as I understand it don't like attorneys and a lot of times they don't like attorneys because of what they charge that's just right. but one reason right well and I think the other thing is when you see a case like was in the paper yesterday a woman is suing Walmart because they're locking up certain items so Gloria Alred gets involved and then that's when I think people have the stigma about attorneys is they're always throwing these frivolous lawsuits right well frivolous lawsuits let let's let's start from the beginning okay attorneys are doctors did you know that I only know that because you told me that well at the end of our name if there's a moniker like when you have John Jones MD you mm -hmm. know that's a medical doctor you see Fred Smith is a PhD He's a doctor by way of schooling as well. It means he has his doctorate in school. He's got his bachelor's, his master's, and his doctorate. Lawyers are doctors. They're juris doctors. That's why you see JD after name. That means we went to school for a long time to learn the law. The law is very difficult. And as a result, it takes a lot to learn what it's all about. A lot of people think, hey, I saw it on TV, and that it's not that big Big a deal. It's not that hard. Right. I can figure it out. I can do it. I can do it in 47 minutes. With Absolutely. I've seen him do it. Yeah. I've seen him do it. All right. Well, that is first to understand the expertise behind what lawyers have in terms of their uh, of what they can do for you. What, what service can they provide? Well, the law affects everything that we do. So a lot of times you need a lawyer for a lot of different things. In criminal law, Everybody knows what that is. You get charged with a crime or a traffic ticket. And a traffic ticket, if you want to fight it, you can do it on your own. But the old saying is, you represent yourself, you got a fool for a client. Mm -hmm. So you don't represent yourself because usually you don't know what you're doing. Some people can get away with it. But long story short, you probably need a lawyer if you're going to fight a traffic ticket or if you're going to be charged with a criminal offense and you don't want to go to jail or there's, there you have a defense, you need a lawyer. Criminal defense lawyers charge usually non-refundable retainers. In other words... You mean up front? Up front. For instance, you get, let's assume you get an OVI, operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol or drugs. That's a misdemeanor. The first offense, it can carry up to, up to six months in jail, a $1,000 fine. That's a big deal. You may have your license taken away. You may have your insurance yanked or increased. You have a lot of problems that are facing you. Um, you don't want to lose your job. You don't want to lose your family. So you hire a lawyer. A lot of lawyers around this town that do that type of work on a regular basis charge for a first offense $5,000 non-refundable retainer. It's not an hourly rate. It is a one-time payment for what they do for you. And it should be spelled out and it should be in writing and the client should sign it. That's the criminal aspect of it. You get charged with murder, could be 100000 200000 O.J. Simpson, I'm sure, spent millions. Probably put him in the poorhouse. I think he spent 4 to $6 million on his defense. Yeah, that, that in and of itself. And there may have been insurance that paid for that, believe it or not. But that's a different story. So criminal defense is usually not an hourly rate. So you have that type of attorney fee. Michael, one thing people, I think, fail to understand is... What is it that attorneys do? Well, they advise you. They tell you what your rights are, what consequences you may have depending on the facts that you present. Abraham Lincoln once said, 
a lawyer's time and advice is his tool and trade, which means when you ask me a legal question, it's no different than you asking a plumber come in and fix your faucet. You see the work done by the plumber and you go, okay, you fix my leaky faucet. Here's 50 bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it is that they charge. And you see work done. Okay, I'm satisfied. Faucet doesn't leak anymore. Here's your money. I'm good. What a lot of times people don't understand is when, an, when you ask an attorney a legal question, they're putting together an answer that's based upon their years of experience, their three years in law school, and everything that they know about the courts interpreting a statute or a particular set of facts. And then you also have to go one step further, the, the research. So you right, have that's to the find research. that answer. But I, I think that's a, a lot of times people are forgetting how many hours you have to put in. It's not a nine to five job, right? No. I mean, you've got to find out, you've got to spend weekends researching these things to see if there's case history that this is already, there's a precedent for it or what the specific answer to this is. So those billable hours, or we're going to get to that structure part later, but that's the key and something that I didn't know until I'd actually spent time with you is the, the way that things are worded are so confusing that if you are not a lawyer, if you don't have this background, the general public could not solve these things. They couldn't Absolutely read through not. If you're dealing with the court system, you have to deal with different personalities, different judges who interpret the law differently. So both sides are making arguments about how the law should be interpreted under the set of facts that are given. Getting back to my example, you call me up, hey, Scott, I got this legal problem. I got this letter in the mail and it said X, Y, and Z. What do I do? Well, you're asking me for my legal advice, and that's my tool and trade. So theoretically, I can start the, start the clock running. And when you do that, you're billing on an hourly basis. So in civil cases, as opposed to criminal cases, where, say, someone says you have done something wrong, you owe me money, or they agreed to do something for you and they did it wrong, you're hiring people normally on an hourly basis. So you may call me up and say, Scott, I asked you to build, I asked this guy to build me a house and the roof leaks, brand new house. And I ask him to fix it and he won't. And I ask him more than once and he won't. I need your representation. Well, you could sit down with me and we may work out an hourly basis fee contract. That means for the work that I do, I'll charge you by the hour, a set amount. Sometimes I require an, what's called an evergreen retainer. In other words, you say, I want, I want you to represent me. And I say, Michael, I can be glad to do it. Let me warn you up front. This is going to be expensive. It's going to take a long time. I don't care, you say. Let's do it. It's a big house. I spent a lot of money. I say, okay, I need $10,000 as an evergreen retainer, and we're going to bill it out at $400 an hour. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of money, Scott. Well, it is a lot of money, but you're asking for a lot to be done. It's going to take a lot of my time. And what you want in return is something that you paid for already. But you but you want it in that instance. If someone says, well, that's expensive, they're coming to you because they have a problem. That's they're right. coming to you because you're the best at what you do. And you're going to invest your time. There's only 86,400 seconds in a day. You're going to give up that time. You should be compensated, right? Well, that's what it is. And a lot of people don't see it because they don't see a finished product. They don't see a fixed faucet. They don't see... Uh, a new electrical outlet. They don't see a new floor. It's hard for people to not for, for people to understand that what they're asking lawyers to do may not be as tangible. You may not see it, but it's being done and it's a great service and it takes a lot of work to do it. So I like to explain up front to you in our example, well, you have to be careful what you wish for because we can probably get this done for you and we can probably be successful, but what is it going to cost you to get to that point? Is it worth it to you? Well, you're going to throw your hands up and be frustrated. Look, I already paid $250,000 for him to build my house, and it's going to cost me another $20,000 to have you represent me to get my roof fixed, which was supposed to be part of it. Well, some remedies in the law allow you to also get your attorney fees paid back. Not many, but some are, for instance, in, this, in your example. Maybe the builder fixes the roof and pays your attorney fees. Maybe. It depends on the facts. It depends on the law. It depends on what the guy did wrong. So with that scenario, I will tell you an evergreen retainer is this. You pay me $5,000 up front. I bill it off at $400 an hour. But you have to keep 
$5,000 in the trust account at all times. Some clients like to give you the $5,000. You spend it all doing the work that they've asked you to do. It's down to zero, and then they don't want to pay you anymore, or they don't have any more money. Well, we, like electricians, don't work for free. So we have a problem at that point. If the client doesn't want to pay you, but they want you to do the work. These are dilemmas that lawyers and clients get into. But these are always set up ahead of time. So if you were to say, you know, the $10,000 Evergreen, if you're going to do it at four or $500 an hour, and here's how many hours, like you're documenting this. You're not just going Absolutely. To, you're not calling them on a Tuesday and saying, you know what? It just ran out. Right. I, mean, I know I was on vacation, but you got to take my word for it. I mean, there is documentation. Oh, no, no. You, do, you present an itemized bill to show what you did and how much time you spent and what that billing rate equals. And you go down through the client and explain to them early on, before the one bill is even issued, how it's going to work so they know. So there's no sh sticker shock. Right. Like well, after the fact, like, holy macro, what happened? What'd you do for $5,000? What'd you do for $10,000? Well, you've said that before. You have to set expectations. And whether you're going to trial or whether you're getting this retainer, you have to let a client know what the expectations are up front. Right. So, because I know you've taken calls from people that we know that have been in accidents, and you said, I'm not your lawyer, but here's what I would do. Because you did tell them up front, like, they didn't retain you. You're you're giving them advice because they're friends of ours who, who've gotten into an issue. So I think that was a – I didn't understand until a couple of weeks ago why you were doing that. Now I get it because we're – as soon as you start to really work on it, you've got to generate – Billing towards it. Right. Say, I'm, I, I'm, you've retained me, so we've got to start billing this out. I'm spending my time. I take my time to help people. And I get paid for very little of it. And a lot of people out there are going to say, oh, you know, attorney fees, they charge too much. It's not worth it, blah, blah, blah. Well, until you understand the basics of what it is that we do and how much it took us to get to the point where we can give you good advice, you usually, of course you don't understand. So that that's one way of billing, hourly. Now let's get to the billing that I do. I represent people who have been injured from cars, truck collisions, premise liabilities where you get hurt on someone's property. If you have a case, I agree to take those cases on a percentage, a percentage of what I can recover. And people go, well, that's quite, you're taking a lot. Okay, well, let's look at it, your options. You're in a car collision, someone runs into the back of you and breaks your neck. You're paralyzed from the neck down. What they did was wrong. They owe you compensation to make you whole monetarily because our system is only based on money. The only thing we can do for you is get you money. That's what the system says. We didn't create the system. Right. We didn't make the system up. So you hear people, money grubbing lawyers. Well, guess what? Our system only allows to get money, in most instances, on a civil case when you're hurt, in our example, as opposed to an eye for an eye. I mean, we, we consider ourselves civilized, and under this civilized system, what we have determined, or our, our founding fathers have determined, is that recovery is best served monetarily. So all I can do for you is get you money in this scenario, and the facts we just talked about. So you come to me and you say, in, in, in the terrible position that you're in, Scott, I want you to represent me. I say, okay, we can do that. And I can do it on a percentage. Normally, attorneys like me do a third, sometimes 40%. Sometimes attorneys agree to do it at less than a third. Can I ask you this? Is there sure. a cap? I didn't, in the research I was looking at, I didn't see that there was so much a cap, but that 30 to 40% seem to be a standard number. It's not one of those things where, I'm just saying this for the person that's listening, it's not like you could take 60% unless otherwise agreed to, right? Right, exactly. The industry standard is a third in personal injury cases. Can it be negotiated? Sure it can. I've negotiated them down. I've negotiated them a little bit up, depending on how much money I'm going to spend. We're going to get to that in a second, too. But a third is about the industry standard. It's just about the industry standard. Now, the one thing that we do, like if you come to me and say, oh, I don't want to pay your percentage, Scott. I say, okay, that's fine. We can do it by the it hour. It's nice to meet you. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We, what we say is we can do it by the hour. I'll charge you by the hour. I charge $400 an hour, and I'm low. A lot of, a lot of the firms downtown are 600 
800 dollars an hour, if you can believe that. They do. Well, in researching it, I saw that and I thought, I can't believe I should have been a lawyer. Oh, in New York City, they're even higher. So th this is this is a pretty good rate. My rate is really good for 35 years of practice with my success rate. So long story short, I say to you, okay, you don't want to pay percentage. That's fine, Michael. I can still help you, but but I can charge you by the hour, $400 an hour. And you're going to say, well, okay, uh, I'd rather do that, but I don't have $400 an hour to do this. Percentages by way of a contingency mm -hmm. fee to people that are injured are the best route to go. Because most people can't afford $400 an hour when you're going to spend 100, 200, 400, 800 hours in a case. And these cases get very time consuming. So when you have a choice, you can do it by the hour. And if people out there don't like the percentage, that's fine. But the percentage helps you if you don't have the money. Now, I give that option. If you want me to pay me by the hour, that's fine. You want to pay me by the percentage, that's fine too. Choose. Let me know or what you retainer. want to do. No, or, don't or not not in, not in oh, in a personal not in civil injury. cases, not in personal injury cases. It's an hourly or a percentage. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't have a, an evergreen retainer just in case I get in an accident. Yeah, yeah, that, that that wouldn't wouldn't happen. And most people, in fact, I've I've had only one or two clients in thirty five years that have been willing to pay me hourly on a personal injury case. Well, we need to take a break right here because I want to get into spending, but I don't want to take a break in the middle of that conversation. Uh, you are listening to Get Justice with Skylar Elliott Smith, and we'll be right back. So I want to talk about how you, like in the case of how you're putting your own money. I don't think people. We're going there next. Let's hey. just go back on the air right now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just do it. All right, okay. Jimmy, bring us back. All right. You're listening to Get Justice with Scott Elliott Smith. Michael, before the break, we were talking about attorney fees on right. personal injury cases. So what goes into this, and someone might say, well, a third sounds like a lot, or 40% sounds like a lot. Some firms will try to discount you at 25%, and everybody thinks, oh, that's a great deal. Well, remember, you get what you pay for. And if there's a firm out there offering 25%, you have to have your ears perk up and wonder what add-ons there may be. Because some firms go, I'll do it at 25%. And then when you get the case settled and it's resolved and you distribute the funds, you see they charge you for X, Y, and Z that you never thought you were going to be charged for. And all of a sudden when you do the math, that's right back up to a third. So be very careful on people who say, we'll do it for 25%. Now, in my instance, it's almost always a third, but it sometimes goes to 40%. And here's why. When you come to me in the example that we gave you, it's a big case. You've been hurt catastrophically so and you're not paying the hourly portion you're not it, paying hourly because if you didn't hear before the break we were talking about the hourly versus the percentage just to yeah reset. what we're talking about is attorney fees here and on personal injury cases it's usually industry standard of a third give or take now it may go up because of this you hire me i've got to hire an expert maybe i need an accident reconstructionist maybe i need a biomechanical engineer Maybe I need a medical physician that's different than your treating doctors. Maybe I need a life care planner. Maybe I need a vocational rehabilitation expert. Now, we can go into all of those experts later and what they mean, but the point of the story is this. Each one of those experts demands money, sometimes a lot of money. Well, the client, normally in your instance, would say, look, Scott, I'm paying your percentage. I don't have money to pay for an expert. So I've got to advance that money. A lot of times I have cases that I've advanced in behalf of clients for costs associated with processing and prosecuting that case of over $100,000. Well, that's a risk for me, isn't well, it? Well, you're putting skin in the game. That, that's the key that people have to understand is the percentage looks really high, except for the fact that you're putting in the money that no one else is. So you're taking the same risk as the person that's hired you. I'm taking... Uh, you're taking more of the risk. I'm, well, I'm taking, I'm taking risk. So I have to make sure that I can represent you, and, and I think that we can succeed. <clears throat> Otherwise, I've made a bad business judgment. So if we lose your case, for whatever reason we lose it, which I don't lose much, but if we did lose it... Well, that's key. We need to get that out. I got $100,000 in the case, and I go, Michael, the contract says... Regardless of what happens in this case, you got to reimburse me for the cost. And you're going to say, sorry, Scott, 
I don't have $100,000. Well, what that really means is, is I'm out hundred grand. Well, look, this isn't my case, but I agreed to take it and I advanced some costs on your behalf. So I am risking, as you just said, the outcome too. So I want you to be successful. I want you to recover. There is incentive when you do percentages. I have an incentive to get as much as I can for you to maximize your recovery because it, it's better for me on the fee. But we also then have to look at the other side that people don't see. What happens if we lose? What happens if something changes? What happens if there's no insurance on the person that hit, hits you and we determine we've already spent a lot of money on experts to reconstruct the accident to prove it was their fault because they're claiming it wasn't? Now we don't have any insurance. We don't have enough insurance. Now we have a lot of costs involved. Who's going to eat those? You're stressing me out because I'm starting to think, in this case, I would have fronted all that money yeah. and then been out. Yeah. So that helps, I hope, people understand why percentages are good on personal injury cases and why they vary. Again, if someone's telling you they can do this on 25%, beware. Beware. Look into who that person is. See if it's a high-volume firm that's just going to run you in, run you out. Maybe not settle for as much as your case is worth. My job is to maximize your recovery. Insurance companies are the problem. They're always the problem. You brought up earlier in this conversation about frivolous lawsuits, and that's what everybody wants to hang their hat on. Oh, look at this newspaper article about this frivolous lawsuit. Okay, really? Really? Well, frivolous lawsuits is a phrase brought on by the insurance companies. They want everybody to say it, march lockstep, saying these lawsuits are frivolous. So the media latches on to it. And the only thing they put in the newspaper are cases that look like they're just ridiculous. And some of them are. And they are frivolous. They are absolutely frivolous. And they have no place in our system. And they should be thrown out. And the attorneys who brought them should be punished. Okay? But very, that, very rare. But I, they do happen. That's the part that drives me nuts is you and I will talk about cases that are affecting everyday people. And then it's always some lawsuit that you're like, I, they're going to sue them for $7 million and right. they've got a case. Right. That's not really what that is. That's grandstanding to hope that a big corporation will write you a check to make this go away. Okay, that doesn't work. Big corporations don't just roll over because you filed a lawsuit and said, hey, here's some money. They don't do that. Insurance companies don't do that. They make you fight tooth and nail for everything that you claim happened. In the example that we talked about with you, and you get hit from behind and you're paralyzed from the neck down, those are big damages. Right. You, your life changes forever, and, your, and the life of your family changes forever. Your case is worth a lot of money. And the insurance company is still going to fight you. Oh, they're going to fight you tooth they, and nail they, on everything. Right. So you have to earn, you as the attorney have to earn everything that's, right. that's every coming every penny. Back. You have to prove everything you say. They, they concede nothing, and the courts make you prove everything. Everything. Down to, down to what day it was. So, you know, it, it requires me, in my due diligence, to retain experts, to do my fact-finding, to hire maybe a private investigator, to find out if this guy was drinking on his phone, working for a company where there may be coverage that will cover you for all your losses. I mean, you're never, you're never going to be back to where you were in our factual scenario, but you should receive monetarily what it equals as best we can. And if, if we can't agree, then we go to a jury. The jury system is the best system we've got going in this country. Thank goodness for a jury system because guys like you, you and me off the street that will hear the case. And then it's not controlled by some judges or, or, or some political party because that's all we have left. Because the insurance company's big business, they're controlling everything. They're controlling who we vote for. They're controlling how the laws are written. They're controlling everything. And we're losing control as everyday people. Well, on that uplifting note, before we leave, <laughs> I just have one question because the more we talk about this, the more curious I am from you from a personal side. There are three different ways to do this, uh, except in the civil case, there's two. Do you prefer to take the percentage because you want to fight? Not fight with the people, but fight for people. No, no. I, either way, I'm good with it. But most people can't afford an hourly rate on a personal injury case. They just can't. I mean, who, who can afford thousands and thousands of dollars? And, and in the long run, it may be better for the client to pay by the hour, but nobody usually can. That, that's why the average person is, benef is benefiting so much from we allow attorneys to charge a percentage. Well, again, 
I wasn't trying to say that you're fighting anybody. I just know how you are. You want to get the maximum for the people that you're dealing with. And I know that you don't back down from anything. That's why I thought the percentage thing, you're putting your own money in, so you're betting no, on yourself. No, we, we don't back down. We don't do that. Yeah, I know. Did you hear how intense that was, by the way? We don't back down. Yeah, I'm used to that off the air. Uh, I think that's going to be it for fees this week. Uh, Jimmy, can you take us out for the week? Thank you for listening to Get Justice with Scott Elliott Smith. Shut that off. Hit the little finish button right there in the corner.